Yes, hi there, Nick. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, this is uh, yeah in session room three from uh, the breakout sessions, and we're going to have some guest speakers uh, just going through some fifteen minutes um, presentations. Where uh, we're going to kick it off with Nick, who will be starting it off. And if anyone has any questions, you can submit them through Slido. Where towards the end of um, each presentation. If we've got some spare time, then we can get through to answering them. If not, then of course we can answer them at a later stage. So uh, Nick, I'm going to hand it over to you right now and you can kick it off. I'm just going to submit the control. You are on mute if you are unaware, just a heads up. Yeah, okay, so there we go. Um, yes, hi, good day. Um, good day, everyone. My name is Nick, as Michael introduced. Thank you for the introduction. Um, let, let's see. There we go. Um, so over the next 10 to 15 minutes, I will share the, the story of how we deployed Ultimo on uh, three sites uh, of BP or BP Castrol in India. Um, as far as I know, it's actually one of the first, if not the first, implementations of Ultimo in India. Um, and uh, so uh, as a bit, a bit of an introduction, I will start uh, with uh, a short introduction of uh, Maxrip. Who is Maxrip? Um, uh, what do we do as Maxrip? Um, and uh, also a little bit of an introduction about myself. So just quickly, um, an introduction about myself. Uh, I'm a senior specialist at Maxrip. I've been working there for about a year and a half now. Uh, I'm Ultimo Premium Advanced certi uh, Certified or advanced configuration certified. Uh, that's mostly due to the fact that prior to uh, me joining Macrip, I actually used to work for Ultimo as a consultant uh, and also temporarily as a managing consultant uh, for the UK. Um, so I've got a lot of experience with uh, implementing the application. Um, Macrip, the company I work for, is a consultancy firm. We specialize in asset performance management. Um, we uh, uh, we pride ourselves in, uh, in uh, being strong in connecting people and technology. Uh, and um, uh, we also um, pride ourselves in, in the fact that we have a lot of uh, consultants with um, experience in the field. Like we have a couple of uh, maintenance. Uh, uh, we have got a lot of uh, people with experience in the field of maintenance engineering and reliability engineering. Um, we've got maintenance managers, uh, we've got uh, a whole lot of experience with boots on the ground, uh, and uh, we have a, the, the majority of our experience is in a, in a variety of uh, technology industries, uh, ranging from fast moving consumer goods uh, through to oil and gas and uh, infrastructure logistics. You name it, we've, uh, we've, we've been there and done that. Um, uh, and you can actually uh, see that also uh, from the next slide. This is just a, a snapshot of uh, a range of customers that we work with. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's all over the place, really. Uh, we've got a wide variety of uh, very interesting and, uh, and strong businesses uh, that we, uh, we work with. Uh, and we do more than just uh, EAM implementations. Um, but today, obviously, is mostly about Castrol. Uh, uh, before I get into that, uh, just another a little bit of information about Maxrip. Uh, we are headquartered in the Netherlands, uh, but we also have uh, offices in uh, Houston and in Kuala Lumpur. We are with over 100 people, uh, and all the dark gray uh, countries that you see uh, listed in, this, uh, uh, in the picture behind the, the sites uh, is also all the countries that we are working in right now. Uh, so as you can see, we are literally all over the map, uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, definitely uh, we have a global presence, and we like to operate uh, in a global uh, setting as well. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we don't only do uh, EAM implementations like Ultimo; we also do a wide variety of other um, asset management and asset performance management related uh, subjects. So. Um, we as Maxra, we uh, provide practical help with uh, uh, so practical help on site in your team, like 
maintenance engineers, reliability engineers. Uh, we also help you with this digital transformation. So we basically assist you in your industry 4.0 uh, opportunities. We check your current systems, tools, processes, and see where improvement potential is, uh, is available. Um, uh, there's a lot more to, uh, to unpack there, but I'm, uh, I uh, would like to get into uh, uh, what you all came here for, and that is the implementation at uh, BP Castro in India. Um, as you can see, I've actually uh, had the, the fortune, uh, fortunate opportunity to, uh, uh, to visit India as well. Um, during the implementation, I was able to visit one of the sites uh, during the period of go live. Uh, and a little bit more on that later. So as I mentioned, three sites uh, that we actually implemented Ultimo on. Uh, BP Castrol in India uh, is, uh, has three sites where they uh, produce lubricants. Uh, so from small one liter bottles to uh, larger barrels of, uh, of uh, lubricants and all those factories uh, now do all of their maintenance with Ultimo. Uh, we started off with the Savasa plant and quite quickly after we also uh, uh, onboarded the Pataganga and Paharpur site. Uh, we did that uh, uh, not as much uh, alone, we did that with a local team of course um, and the picture on the right actually uh, shows the, the, the most critical uh, team members for that team. Um, the nice thing as well, th this was uh, taken in uh, Silvasa and uh, two of the people in the picture are actually from the other sites. Uh, so it's also a very uh, good way to illustrate that um, everyone came together to, uh, 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 to learn from one another, uh, to share their experiences. Uh, and that is also one of the key critical things that we, uh, we always like to, uh, 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 to establish in our projects. Um, I also didn't do this implementation uh, by myself. I did that with a team from MaxRip. I was the lead consultant together with uh, my colleague Mark, who was the project leader. We uh, did the bulk of the work, but also my colleagues Tyson and Yesha were uh, invaluable to the project. They were uh, part-time support basically on, uh, on this project uh, and uh, were a big help uh, to us in a, in a variety of uh, cases. Um, then uh, to get to, to, the, to the meat and potatoes basically of um, what we did uh, during the implementation, um, and uh, I primarily want to uh, go over what we call the best practices for um, uh, a deployment like this. Uh, uh, we always like to have an unbiased project leader uh, that is preferably not connected to one of the sites. Uh, and in this case, we also had the, the fortune to, to work with uh, 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 someone from the BP, uh, uh, BP India uh, headquarters uh, and he uh, he has been the project leader and actually is still the project leader to this day uh, and that helped out tremendously with getting people together um, making sure that um, all sites were always consulted on uh, all decisions um, during uh, the implementation we uh, always start to do uh, cross-site workshops so whenever we did workshops on uh, any subject matter we try to get uh, people from all different uh, sites uh, involved uh, so that we can focus on a, a same way of working, uh, making sure that all the processes uh, align with one another. Uh, and also one of the key critical things with a multi-site rollout like this um, is to make sure that you have uniform processes where uh, it is possible for both larger teams as well as smaller teams to work uh, with that same process. Uh, in this example, uh, one of the sites, Pahapur, is, uh, is a little bit smaller than the others, uh, and therefore also uh, you don't want to burden them with the additional um, weight and ballast of uh, a, a complicated process that might work for one of the, the sites. So that's always a fine balance you need to strike. And I think we, we achieved that quite well here. Um, uh, and uh, also uh, something that we are uh, uh, we think is very important as well is that um, uh, our customers are aware of the fact that actually the business deployment is usually more, uh, uh, is simply much more than just implementing the software. It's not just getting that software to work uh, for the company, but basically the, the uh, most important thing there is to get the people to work with the software, with the tool, uh, and that is always uh, the bigger uh, the bigger challenge. 
Uh, and in that regard, we as Max Grip always try to cover all the areas from uh, the way of working from the, of the people to the data uh, integrity and data standards, as well as having uniform processes. Uh, and that's basically how we like to uh, achieve the best results. Um, and when we take a look at uh, what was actually a critical component for this specific project. Um, so we implemented uh, uh, Ultimo Premium with basically all the bells and whistles that you would expect from the, the out of the box functionality. Um, but one of the critical uh, uh, pieces of functionality was Ultimo Go. Uh, the mobile application, uh, basically, um, the, the Kestrel team wanted to get their uh, workers connected to the system, wanted them to be able to uh, have all of their information available when they are, were working in the field, uh, but not only for the technicians, they also wanted uh, it to be easier for operators and people on the line uh, to be able to raise new jobs or work orders in the system, new requests. Uh, and that's what the, the image on the right actually shows. They, they uh, had some quite simple uh, but clever stands uh, that they mounted a tablet in and utilized Ultimo Go functionality with the, the newly released um, uh, reporting for self-service users that was only released last year, I believe. Um, uh, and they use, it, use that to great effect to make it easier for the, the end users to actually report uh, uh, jobs uh, and make it easier for them to, uh, to work with, uh, with one another. Um, so the results so far, uh, we started only, uh, only at the back end of 2021. Uh, and in April, we had the first go live already. Uh, so Ultimo was rapidly deployed uh, across multiple sites. What you can also see uh, with that is that we have a lot more um, uh, cross-site collaboration. They're sharing their best practices. They're sharing the way that the way they do certain types of maintenance. So that's quite good. Um, I believe that we have a lot of happy users. We get a lot of positive feedback about it. Uh, and as I mentioned, all three sites went live in, in quite a, a, a brisk pace. Uh, so in, at the end of April, I was over in, uh, in India and went uh, supported the go live uh, uh, in Silvassa. The other two sites went live only a couple of weeks later. And we did that completely fully uh, supported uh, remote. Um, uh, last thing I wanted to share with you is what is still in the works uh, because the project is still ongoing. We're at the back end of the project. Um, and that is mostly how we are embedding the system into their uh, EAM, uh, so into their uh, IT landscape. And that is uh, the integration with their ERP system, Oracle JDE. Uh, that one actually is uh, currently in the final stages of testing. And we're uh, also very much uh, working on a focus on reporting and BI solutions right now. Uh, and that is everything that I want us to share with you today. Um, I, I firstly already want to thank you for your time. And maybe we have some questions from the, uh, from the viewers. Yes, thanks a lot, Nick. I appreciate that. Um, we are running quite low on time, but let me just have a quick look and see if there's any questions that have come through. Um, I believe we have one question, which is, um, can you give some best practices regarding buy-in from the workforce? Other than that, what you have already mentioned. Um, yeah, so uh, best practices regarding uh, buy-in of the workforce. Um, well, one thing that we always like to do is to make sure that, that uh, the workforce feels ownership of uh, not just the, the end result, the product, uh, which obviously is good, but also get them involved in the, uh, in the project itself. So we always invite uh, some of the end users as well during, the, the, uh, uh, during some of the workshops. Uh, and uh, what we always like to do is try and, and get that ownership in, into like middle management level um, we tried to set up internal communications uh, during go live phases, for instance, we did that through uh, setting up WhatsApp groups. Uh, so we actually had them uh, uh, all in the same WhatsApp group during the go live. So that one person hit a snag or uh, ran into a question that everyone could share that, for instance. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so that's a couple of the, the things that we try to do uh, to uh, 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 to get buy-in from the from the end users. Great, yeah, no, thanks for that. Um, I think 
if we have um yeah we've got some questions more coming through but i think uh uh, time's gone up, so we can just always forward this on to you, if that's all right. And then of course, we can yes. definitely get to, to some more of the questions at a later stage. Um, but for now, we're going to have to take a break for the next five minutes. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, Nick. Really appreciate it. And we'll definitely forward further questions at a later stage. Okay. Well, thank you for the opportunity pre to present. And also thank you, everyone, for your time uh, uh, and uh, listening to me. Of course. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.